What do bubbles and butterfly wings have in common? Well, the cool colours you can see on both are due to a phenomena known as thin film interference. So what is thin film interference? Well, the thin film bit is easy enough to explain. A thin film is basically just a thin layer of material between a few nanometers to several micrometers in thickness. As for interference, let's look at what happens if we have two waves travelling at once. If we want to find the total effect of both these waves, what we have to do is add them together at every point. If the two waves are in sync, so where there's a peak on the first wave, there's a peak on the second, where there's a trough on the first wave, there's a trough on the second, we say that they're in phase. If we go along the waves, adding the amplitudes together at every point, we can see that it gives us another wave with twice the amplitude of the two waves that we started off with. This is known as constructive interference. The two waves have added together to give us a bigger wave. We can do the exact same thing if we look at what happens when we have two waves which are the exact opposite of each other. As we can see, where there's a peak on the first wave, there's a trough on the other. Where there's a trough on the first wave, there's a peak on the other. When we go along as before, adding them together, we can see that they completely cancel each other out. This is known as destructive interference. These two waves have added together and cancelled each other out, so we get nothing. So as we've seen, when two waves match up exactly, they add up to make a bigger wave, and we know that's known as constructive interference. In our example of constructive interference, both our waves started at the same point. But what if they didn't? Is there any way we can still make them match up like before? Well, let's see what happens if we shift the start of the second wave along by one wavelength. We say this has a path difference of one wavelength, because the first wave has travelled one wavelength further than the second. As we can see, this doesn't change anything. If we add the two waves together again, we can see that the same thing happens. We end up with constructive interference. What about if the start of the second wave is shifted by two wavelengths? So we have a path difference of two wavelengths. Well, we're still seeing the same thing. And we'd see the same thing if there was a path difference of three wavelengths or four wavelengths, and so on. In general, if one wave has travelled a whole number of wavelengths further than the other, we end up with constructive interference occurring. Similarly, for destructive interference, we saw that this occurred when the start of the second wave was shifted by half a wavelength. But if we shift the start of the second wave by one and a half wavelengths, so that the first wave has travelled one and a half wavelengths further than the second, we can see that the waves still cancel each other out, and we're still getting destructive interference. And the same thing would happen with a path difference of two and a half wavelengths, and of three and a half wavelengths, and so on. In general, if one wave has travelled a whole number plus a half wavelengths further than the other, we end up with destructive interference occurring. So, let's go back to our thin film again. If we shine a light on our film, a portion of the light will reflect off the boundary, and a portion of the wave will be transmitted through the boundary. The transmitted portion of the wave enters the new medium and continues travelling until it reaches the next boundary. At the next boundary, some of it will be reflected again. So in the end, we end up with two waves that emerge from the film, one wave that's reflected off the top of the film and the other wave that's reflected off the bottom of the film. As we can pretty easily see, the wave that's been reflected off the top of the film has travelled further than the wave that was reflected off the bottom of the film. Does this remind you of anything? Our conditions for constructive and destructive interference, right? If the film is just the right thickness that the wave reflected off the bottom of the film has travelled a whole number of wavelengths further than the bit reflected off the top of the film, we know we'll end up with constructive interference. If this occurs, then when we look at the film, it'll appear very bright. But, if the film is just the right thickness for the wave reflected off the bottom of the film to have travelled a whole number plus a half wavelengths further than the bit reflected off the top of the film, we know we'll end up with destructive interference. If this is happening, when we look at the film it will look black, because the light waves are cancelling each other out. So how does this apply to bubbles? Well, a bubble is basically just a thin film of soap and water with air on both sides. If we shine light which only contains one wavelength, so that's light that's only one colour and we call that monochromatic light, on the bubble, 
When the bubble is just the right thickness, as we've seen, constructive interference will occur and the bubble will appear bright. But visible light isn't just made up of one wavelength, it's made up of a whole variety of wavelengths, each characterised by its own colour. Red light has a different wavelength to orange light, which has a different wavelength to yellow light, and so on. While the thickness of a film might be perfect for red light to interfere constructively, it might be the wrong thickness for yellow light, so the yellow light will interfere destructively and we won't see it. So as such, when we shine a mixture of red and yellow light on the film and look at it, it will appear red. If it's a different thickness, this might be a perfect thickness for yellow light to interfere constructively, and all other wavelengths destructively. So if we shine sunlight of all different wavelengths on the film, we'll only see the yellow light reflected, because all other wavelengths are kind of cancelling each other out. And another thickness might be perfect for constructive interference of green light, and another for blue light, and so on. And because the bubble isn't the same thickness all the way around, this means there'll be different points on the bubble where it's different thicknesses. So different colours of light will interfere constructively and destructively, so different bits of the bubble will look different colours. And this is why, when we look at a bubble, we see all those really cool kind of rainbow patches of colour. And what about butterfly wings? The wings of a blue morpho butterfly are a brilliant iridescent blue colour, but this isn't actually down to the pigment colour of the wings, because the pigment colour of the wings of the blue morpho is brown. Instead, the colour's down to the structure of the wings. The wings of the butterfly contain tiny tree-like structures whose branches and the air gap between them act as multi-layer thin films. These films are just the right thickness for blue wavelengths of light to constructively interfere, while longer wavelengths, such as those of red light, interfere destructively so we don't actually see them. There are six to ten layers of branches that make up each of these tree-like structures, and the number of branches results in the distinctive vivid blue colour that we all know. So, next time you go and see tropical butterflies, you can explain to your friends and family why the wings are the way they are, and try and convince them that you're doing a useful degree with real-life applications.